The word is polka dot. Get used to it. This is a word you're going to be hearing a lot on this channel because it is one of the most exciting things to hit crypto in a long time. It's backed by Gavin Wood, one of the co-founders of Ethereum. This project is about to blow people away and will most likely become a top 20 crypto very soon. And virtually, no one is talking about it right now. Get the full scoop here as we show why it could be an incredible opportunity. Let's get it. Welcome to BitBoy Crypto, the hardest working channel in all of cryptocurrency. If you're new, hit that subscribe button and join both my Telegram groups to learn more about crypto or connect with me and the Bit Squad. All right, guys, today we are going to be talking about Polkadot. No, not the design on your underwear, but a crypto project about to dive bomb the space. And a quick warning, this is going to be pretty tech heavy in the beginning because we have to lay the groundwork so you understand the why to this project. Then we'll be getting into a hot new project that's built on top of Polkadot. So first, let's explain what it is. Ethereum has scalability issues and well, Bitcoin really has problems scaling. With Ethereum 2.0, they aim to fix these problems. However, a new challenger has entered the fray called Polkadot, which raised $43.3 million in a private sale in July, and this will be the next hot crypto. Ethereum co-founder Gavin Wood left the Ethereum Foundation in 2016, after which he wrote a white paper for a new kind of blockchain that would use sharding and cross-chain communication to achieve both scalability and interoperability that Ethereum 1.0 could never be able to achieve. Polkadot is a network protocol that allows arbitrary data, not just tokens, to be transferred across blockchains. Polkadot claims to be a true multi-chain application environment where things like cross-chain registries and cross-chain computation are possible and say the protocol can transfer data across public, open, permissionless blockchains as well as private permissioned blockchains. Both Ethereum 2.0 and Polkadot use sharding to achieve scalability. Sharding involves partitioning the blockchain network or its data to enable parallel processing and thus increase throughput. However, sharding is a very broad term, and these two projects utilize different methods to shard. Currently, Ethereum 1.0 operates on a single chain structure where every node must validate every transaction. In contrast, Ethereum 2.0 has a main chain called the Beacon Chain that will allow communication between the shards, which connect to the Beacon Chain. Shards can then process in parallel, allowing a higher throughput of transactions and much faster transactions in the single chain structure. Ethereum 2.0 will impose a particular condition on shards connecting to the Beacon Chain, and the E shard must have a uniform method for changing state with each block added to the blockchain. Polkadot uses a different variant of sharding as we mentioned. The Polkadot network also has a main chain called the Relay Chain. Shards on Polkadot are known as parachains and can also execute transactions in parallel. However, Polkadot uses a far more flexible protocol to allow parachains to connect to the main chain, meaning that any parachain can determine its own rules regardless of how it changes state, unlike Ethereum's beacon chain. Additionally, Polkadot offers a high level of interoperability that won't even be possible with Ethereum 2.0. That means there's still going to be some restrictions as only Ethereum-specific shards can be part of the Ethereum ecosystem. Polkadot uses bridge pair chains that can connect to external blockchains offering two-way compatibility. This means, effectively, Ethereum could connect to the Polkadot ecosystem via a bridge pair chain so that dApp developers could interact with any other Polkadot pair chain. You can kind of think of this maybe as a competitor also to Cosmos in the Tendermint underlying structure. However, the opposite isn't possible. Polkadot could not become a shard on Ethereum's beacon chain. Moonbeam is one example of a bridge parachain that provides developers with an Ethereum-compatible smart contract platform that's built on top of Polkadot. The other big worry for Ethereum is Polkadot recently launched its mainnet in May, announcing that the project's roadmap will involve phased upgrades to a fully decentralized infrastructure with governance. The first phase is proof of authority, which involves assembling validators for the network. The project isn't just ahead of Ethereum 2.0, it recently launched a second phase, which is known as Nominated Proof of Stake. Meanwhile, Ethereum 2.0 has been struggling to get off the ground for several years now. Is this sweet revenge for Gavin Wood, where 
he will try to do something unbelievable and knock off Ethereum? Vitalik hasn't been this scared since 4 mile per hour wind blew while he was out for a walk. Can it compete though? Only time will tell. This is because there's been talk of a scalability upgrade for Ethereum since around 2017, and it's likely to take as long as 2022 for the full implementation to be completed. We'll be in another bear market by then. I would say the only advantage that Ethereum has over Polkadot is it has a long established developer base and community, and the most developer activity when it comes to blockchain. But if Ethereum isn't quick enough, Polkadot could eventually take over its spot. And in general, being able to connect to blockchains is a big deal, which could spur a takeover anyway. So watch out, Ethereum. Polkadot has also just released its testnet, Rococo, or however I'm supposed to say that, specifically designed for well testing its inner shard communication protocols. The testnet was released on August 4th and teased by parity developer Bastion Kosher. Polkadot's architecture is based on the concept of parachains, which are independent but cross communicating blockchains. Parachains are themselves based on Substrate, which is a blockchain building framework that provides the software foundation for parachains. Speaking of interoperability, Polkadot has also teamed up with DeFi's biggest, besides Ethereum, partnering with Cosmos and Terra to announce Anchor. Anchor is a new DeFi savings product that aims to offer dependable interest rates on stable coins deposits. The companies involved in the creation of Anchor plan to launch it across their respective blockchains at the end of quarter three this year and scale across to other POS or proof of stake blockchains in the future. Do Kwan, or Do Kwan, I don't know, founder and CEO of Terra explained in a prepared statement. While DeFi stables such as Maker and Compound have been revolutionary in creating fully decentralized crypto money markets, the volatility of their interest rates makes them unsuitable to be used as a household savings product. DeFi mass adoption needs the creation of a fully decentralized savings account that offers dependable APR. Anchor smart contracts receive stablecoin deposits and use a portion of them to then acquire staking positions on compatible proof-of-stake blockchains. Users will receive their passive income from these staking rewards. Polkadot looks very promising and my team and I are going to be looking for Polkadot-related projects for future videos on top gem picks because I think they're going to crush it. For now, we are going to look into one project I've been demanded to talk about, which is Staffy. Thanks, researchers. Staffy is short for staking finance. It touts itself as the first decentralized protocol unlocking liquidity of staked assets. You can stake your POS token through Staffy and receive our token in return, which is much better than our not token. Our token will in turn enable you to obtain staking rewards and trade the locked staking token at the same time. FIS is the native token on Staffy Chain. FIS is required to provide security to the network by staking, pay for transaction fees on the Staffy Chain, mint, and redeem our tokens. Now, as you may know, a proof of stake system is only as good as the number of coins staked upon it. Although the more coins staked is better, it comes at the expense of lack of liquidity and network valuation growth. And that's very important, something that holds some of these projects back. The protocol runs in a purely decentralized manner. Staffy, which is built on Substrate, will be connected to Polkadot as a parallel chain, sharing the underlying consensus of Polkadot itself. The main security and performance are also guaranteed by Polkadot. The core layer is the contract level, and the ownership of the stake token is fully guaranteed by the contract code. Stavi uses a distributed key storage protocol to ensure the security of the stake address through multi-signatures. The holder can initiate stake or redeem the stake anytime and anywhere without the need for third-party intervention. When the holder of the coin initiates the stake token to the stake contract, the system's inflation incentives can be obtained regularly. Meanwhile, any holder of our tokens can initiate a redemption to the corresponding stake contract anytime, anywhere. The redemption operation interacts with the original chain through the Staffy protocol. After the redeeming transaction is written to the chain, stake coins will be sent to the submitted coin account after unlocked. The Staffy protocol guarantees that each and every alternative R token is exclusively correspondent to the token on the original chain. That's to say, only the holder of the R tokens can initiate the redemption of the original token to the stake contract. When A trades R tokens to B, A no longer has a redemption right to those tokens, and B can now initiate redemption to the staking contract. This whole process does not require third-party intervention. 
Stavi has also introduced the liquid state concept to one of this channel's frequently mentioned DeFi projects, Elrond. Projects in the Elrond proof-of-stake economy will get access to liquidity for their state collateral via integration with Staffy Protocol. Staking finance is a novel DeFi protocol type that makes it possible to use the value lock for staking in DeFi scenarios. The addition of liquidity options for Elrond staking will attract more sophisticated participants to the Elrond economy. This, in turn, will lead to more value locked into it, resulting in increased security and stability for our network. We're happy to explore this avenue together with Stavi. That was the Elrond CEO, Ben Amin Minku, or maybe Minchu. I never know how to pronounce these names, and I even know that guy. Another cool project being built on Polkadot is a Bitcoin bridge. Earlier this year, Interlay received a grant from Web3 Foundation to develop a Bitcoin bridge on Polkadot that would allow wrapped versions of BTC to be exchanged on the network. Not only just Bitcoin, but on February 25th, it announced its integration with Chainlink to provide Polkadot-based oracles, which is a key feature for enabling DeFi. While a few days before that, a strategic collaboration with Seller Network was announced to bring its Layer 2 sidechains to Polkadot. Big things are happening, and Polkadot might be just the next big thing. Dots is available on Binance right now, Huobi, OKX, and many other exchanges. However, this one comes with a warning label. Dot transfers are not enabled yet. Allocations of Polkadot tokens are technically legally non-transferable at this time. Any dots currently trading on exchanges are not sanctioned by Web3 Foundation. Please perform your own due diligence. There could be a chance that this project drops heavily before it goes back up on a climb. The DOT token will soon undergo a redenomination from its original sale. New DOTs will be 100x smaller than old DOTs. Therefore, your balance will be 100 times higher and the price per DOT will be 100 times lower. It's like complicated token swap stuff. This is expected to take place around August 21st. So make sure to see the Polkadot blog post for more information. But now it's your turn. What do you think about Polkadot? Do you think that it could be what EOS was meant to be, or NEO as the Ethereum killer, or are you still just bullish on Ethereum? Do you think there's no room for a competitor? Let me know down below in the comments section. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to smash the like button and hit subscribe to become a member of the Bid Squad. Thank you so much for watching. Have a blessed day. Bitboy out.